What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video, another paper walkthrough. And of course, uh, well, this is not going to be always going to be the case, but there's going to be a paper implementation after this one, um, just as there was on picks to picks So the one we're taking a look at now is from pretty much, it was, I think it was the same authors uh, that did the picks to picks papers. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe so. But this one is called CycleGAN, and it's a bit different, although there are definitely some similarities to uh, pix to pix But so, uh, yeah, the title is Unpaired Image-to-Image -image Translation Using Cycle Consistent Adversarial Networks. So this network can do pretty cool stuff. Uh, I guess one of the m ones that it was kind of made most famous for was this uh, Zebras to Horses, and also it can do the inverse mapping. So these are zebra images uh, to horses images, and then these are... Uh, a horse image to a zebra and then it can do other stuff like convert you know uh, these uh, summer to uh, winter uh, and stuff like that so actually I can give you a little bit of a sneak peek to the next video which is going to be the implementation of this so I'm actually training it right now uh, in the background so let me show you some examples all right so these are the ones I, I took so for example here they have some images uh, from the uh, yeah some additional in the appendix and then we can see that they look like that and the ones that I've uh, been able to reproduce uh, look something like this uh, so this is a uh, you know a, um, a zebra that's been converted to a horse and then you can see the uh, the uh, the back conversion so you convert it into a a, ze uh, a horse and then you try to reconstruct the original zebra um, similarly to what they did in the uh, uh, in the paper all right anyways now i'm kind of confusing you a little bit all right so the idea here is that we're basically uh given any uh we're given two unordered image collections x and y and you can just uh, view x to be uh horses y to be zebras to make things a little bit more uh, simple i guess and the idea is to automatically translate an image from one uh, to the other and you know i guess what's really important here is that uh, uh, this, you know, right, what we're doing right here is, uh, I guess, unsupervised, right? Because we don't have a, a, a Y image pair to to that exact um, input uh, X. So that is a, a, a bit of a different, I guess, uh, situation than what is uh, normally. So basically in the abstract, they mentioned that, you know, for many tasks, they, there aren't paired training data available. Uh, and then that they pre uh, present this new approach uh, for learning to translate an image from a source domain X, so horses, to target domain Y or zebras, uh, and and also uh, the inverse mapping, and then in the uh, in the absence of these uh, paired examples as we talked about, so basically you know the goal is to learn a mapping that takes um, horses to zebras, given a um, or with a generator G. And then they use an adversarial loss for that. Um, but then they also mentioned that because this mapping is highly under constrained, they also couple it with an inverse mapping F, Y to X and introduce a cycle consistency loss to enforce um, basically that we get back the original. So, you know, if we, uh, if we send in a image of a horse and we um, uh, generate a zebra, then we should be able to have another generator that can take this image of a zebra and try to uh, reconstruct the original horse. And the reconstructed horse should be um, pretty much, uh, you know, ideally should be identical to the original one. And that's sort of the cycle consistency uh, that they mention here. So we basically do that for one way and then we do the uh, same thing for the other way. Taking, I guess, uh, zebras to, uh, to a, an image of a horse. So again, I'm going to try to, um, you know, as I mentioned in the last paper walkthrough, I don't want these videos to be uh, super long. I basically want to make these as compact as possible so that you can then follow the implementation and, and feel that you understand, um, you know, really all of the important stuff. So we're going to move along and we're going to go to this. So, uh, so in the uh, cycle consistency, if we look, you know, right, he right here, uh, then we basically have a generator X and we have a generator F. So this generator G takes uh, an image of a horse to a zebra, right? So this is the horse and then this is the zebra. And then uh, we have a discriminator that is uh, trained 
to uh, be able to classify if this image of a zebra is a fake zebra or a real zebra. So, you know, sort of very standard as we do in GANs, right? And then we do the opposite. So we take this, um, uh, this image of a zebra, we try to construct an image of a horse, and we have this discriminator that is trained to be able to distinguish between uh, a real image of a horse and a fake image of a horse. And then also we have this, uh, this cycle consistency so that when we take this image of a horse, we use our generator and, uh, and when we then use the other generator on this sort of um, already generated image of a zebra, we should preferably get back um, X and X uh, hat in this case. So the, the goal, right, is for X to be equal to X hat. So we enforce this uh, with a cycle consistency loss. And uh, yeah, they use an L1 loss for that, but uh, we'll see that, I guess, when we move further along uh, in the paper. And basically, you know, uh, this is the same thing, just the other way around. So we, we should be able to uh, reconstruct the image of a, a zebra as well. Um, so, you know, you can already start to imagine that, you know, we're going to have these GAN losses for first the generator, um, and for both of the generators, right? We're training two generators here. And then we also have these additional losses uh, for the cycle consistencies. So I guess there's a lot of sort of, sort of more loss terms than what we're used to. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see that also, or you'll see that in the next video when we go through the implementation of this. And uh, yeah, I also wanted to mention that, you know, this uh, cycle consistency idea, uh, they mentioned this, you know, in the, in the paper that this is um, one sort of idea that has uh, been used historically quite a lot. And so this, this, uh, this idea of having a, a cycle consistency is not something that's new in this paper. But uh, yeah, I don't want to go too in, in depth on that, but I just wanted to mention it that this is sort of um, an idea that you might see in other papers uh, also. All right, so I guess for the adversarial loss, um, uh, this is, you know, pretty much, you know, your standard uh, GAN training right here. Um, this is only for training one of the discriminators. But of course, you can imagine that we're going to have an identical one for the other generator that does sort of the, um, the inverse task. Uh, the only thing they do here is that this is going to be with a mean squared error loss uh, instead of using these... Um, uh, these logarithmic uh, logarithm terms so and uh, I believe they mentioned that later on also but that's just one sort of detail of this which you'll see in the implementation video but um, you know that's just one thing to keep in mind and then for the cycle consistency right here uh, it's sort of what you would expect you sort of just take the inverse of the um, all right so you take X this uh, this uh, image of a horse you take G that in uh, that tries to generate a zebra, and then you take it back with this other generator F, and then you take the uh, you subtract it pixel by pixel with the original image, and you use an L1 loss, um, and you do that for for both of the um, for the uh, horse to zebra and the zebra to to horse, so you do it both ways, and that's why you have these two terms that you add, um, and then the um, sort of when we put all of this together, right, we get uh, two uh, GAN losses. So we get one for one generator, and then we get another for another generator, and uh, and then we get this, um, and then we get this cycle consistency, which involves uh, both of the, of the generators as well. And I guess um, also, you know, obviously we need to train both of these discriminators also. But... Uh, yeah, this is one of those cases where, you know, if you see the implementation, it's going to be more clear perhaps, but hopefully you still understand the, the overall idea here. Basically, the uh, for the network architecture, um, yeah, they, they use some convolutions in the beginning uh, to sort of downsample a little bit, and then they use several residual blocks, and then they use um, two transpose convolutions to upsample it again, and then, you know, one also final com layer that maps it to RGB. And then they mentioned that they use six blocks, um, residual blocks for 128 uh, squared images, and nine residual for 256. Um, and uh, yeah, they also use instance normalization for this instead of batch norm. 
Uh, I haven't tried it with Bash Norm, but I guess I'm not sure if this is too important, but yeah, I guess it's kind of hard to tell, but I would imagine that Bash Norm would also work here perhaps. And um, you know, one idea is also that we saw in the uh in the Pix to Pix paper, they use this uh you know this unit um you know they use unit for the generator. Here they don't use that. Um but I did try it with unit and still got pretty good results. So I would imagine that you know you can also use a unit architecture here. So yeah, that's at least from my understanding. And then um in the discriminator they use these um I guess yeah they, they use a 70 by 70 patch can similarly as picks to picks yeah so a patch can basically this is uh, a little bit uh, going through this a little bit quickly you can watch the uh, uh, the picks to picks video if you want more details on this but basically um, we're gonna output um, instead of outputting just just a single scalar we're gonna output a, a sort of a grid of values so yeah, the 70 by 70 comes from that just when we sort of calculate this out, we get that each value in the output, um, each of these values in this grid uh, is responsible for um, seeing a 70 by 70 patch in the original. And uh, this makes it a little bit simpler or a little bit more efficient network because we don't have to have that many comp layers um, in, in the discriminator. And um, yeah, so uh, the training details is that here they mention you know that they um, they replace this this uh, log likelihood with a least squares uh, with an, a mean squared error loss and then uh, basically they become more stable and then um, they also yeah so that's basically what they mentioned here that they replace the log for a mean squared error and then yeah they use um, uh, lambda equals to 10 and if you forgot lambda is basically for this um, cycle loss so that's basically what we weight the uh, cycle loss with so they use a lambda of 10 and then they use atom solver with a batch size of one so um, yeah I guess you know since we have uh, you know we have two discriminators and we have two generators uh, it might be the case that it just takes a little bit more VRAM and that's why they use a batch size of one um, yeah, I'm not really sure. That's probably what I would assume. And then learning rate 2e mean 2e minus 4, uh, exactly as picks to picks. And then they use learn same learning rate for 100 epochs and then linearly decay it. Um, yeah, so when I replicated, I had to train a little bit longer than this. Um, but yeah, or I'm sort of I'm still training it, but I think I had to run for a little bit longer than this. All right, so let's move on. These are, yeah, you can read. These are nice stuff, but it's not too important. And then, yeah, I also wanted to mention this part. So basically, they trained it on, on a bunch of data sets, right? And on some data sets, they also introduced this uh, identity loss. So this identity loss is that if you, um, basically, if you take the generator that is supposed to basically convert a horse to a zebra, if you send in an image of a zebra, you know, it's already sort of perfect, right? Then it shouldn't um, uh, sort of change the input image anything, right? So if we uh, send in this image of a, of a zebra, this uh, image Y, then we, we just shouldn't change the original image. And similarly for the opposite. So we do that by just using this uh, identity loss and we do that with uh, an L1 loss. So the idea, as you can imagine, uh, is that we don't want to change the uh, sort of the coloring or the tint of the input images sort of uh, when we don't have to. So, uh, yeah, so I guess uh, I implemented this and I, I um, accidentally used it at first when training on these uh, horses to zebras. And uh, I'm not really sure if, uh, if that caused an issue, but when I removed it, uh, I got slightly better results. So I guess it's important to it's important to not I guess not use this when it's not too important when you don't care too much about the coloring perhaps but that's sort of just one thing to keep in mind that one can experiment with and uh yeah limitations and discussion so I think this is an important part so you know you um you can see that it, it you know it, it achieves pretty good results but 
uh, and, and specifically, you know, it's good on these um, when it involves color and texture changes. But when we, uh, so when they uh, explored tasks that required geometric changes, um, they didn't have that much success. So for example, when they did a task of dog to a cat, you know, th that sort of, you need to change the shape, right, of the, uh, of the thing in the image. And then it doesn't seem to do that well. And they speculate that this is because of um, basically the generator architecture, which they uh, copied, I think, from Justin Johnson, who did, who used this generator architecture for, um, I don't know, for neural style transfer, I think. So, um, but which is basically just changing the coloring, right? So they speculate that, you know, because the, the generator architecture here is uh, tailored to, uh, good performance on the appearance changes. So, you know, that, that could be the case. All right, so then we have some examples of what it can do. And as always, these are cherry-picked images. Uh, there are definitely, um, you know, these are good examples. Just always remember that these images are cherry-picked. And then if we go down even further to the training details, and this is what we care about, right? Then uh, they train the network from scratch, which is always nice, uh, 2A minus 4 learning rate. And then they mentioned that in practice, we divide the objective by two while optimizing the discriminator, which slows down the rate at which D learns relative to the rate of G. And uh, yeah, when I, so I don't really understand what they mean here because, um, yeah, so this is kind of a question mark for me because uh, even if you divide the learning rate of, of uh, uh, or the, the, the loss, of the discriminator, you're still gonna, it's gonna be the same result. It's gonna still minimize that loss function. Doesn't matter if, if the loss function is 10 or, you know, versus, you know, five, it's still gonna do the same um, computation on the, uh, and, and, and sort of the, the gradient computations on the, on the weights. So I don't really understand this part. Perhaps someone can uh, clarify what they mean, mean here, perhaps. But um, yeah, so I guess we can go down and we can see so the network architecture, uh, they use a, um, yeah, so, you know, C7, S1, <clears throat> and then K is a 7x7 seven seven conv instance norm ReLU. So they use, um, you know, instance norm everywhere instead of batch norm in the uh, generator and discriminator. And they seem to uh, use ReLU only in the generator. Um, so basically what they do here is, um, here they use a 7x7 seven seven kernel, 64 out filters, then they use a downsampling, and this is, let's see, this is a DK is three by three with K filters and a stride of two. So they downsample with a stride of two in the uh, three by three com layer. So that's what they do here and over here. And then they just use a bunch of residual blocks. So uh, these are six residual blocks, and then they use an upsample with a com transpose, another one, another one right there, and then the, um, the last, which takes it to RGB channels, is another uh, seven by seven uh, uh, kernel. They uh, also use uh, reflect padding uh, to reduce artifacts, which I mentioned here. And then also, uh, let's see. So they also, here for the discriminator, it's the exact same as uh, as pix to pix So they just use sort of a, um, a, uh, a four by four kernel with a stride of uh, stride of two in most cases, um, and then yeah, they basically just use that, and that's it. So uh, I guess the only thing here is that they um, on the last one it's a stride of one I think, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And they use a padding of one on uh, all of these. All right, so that's it for this paper walkthrough. Please like the video if you thought it was useful, uh, and in that way, I'll do more of these videos. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time.